I'm going to do Lead Code Weekly Contest 177, and after I solve all the problems, I'll be explaining my solutions. This is just annoying. Okay. Deploy for sub users are deployed hundred. So leap years, these are no longer. None the ones. Is it in one? 
Exactly one by any tree. the absolute value. And now I can need a root. What's the minus thing?
Then I have check function. What kind of case is this? I call you one valid binary tree. How is this hard? We just check that the sum is divisible by 3. some of the given dinges, not all of them. Thank you. 
actually. Okay, let's see. I can submit this. Accepted. Okay, that's a stupid bug. I have a really bad finish time, so. While I wait for the scoreboard to update, I'll start explaining my solutions. So for this problem, maybe there's a library function that you can use, I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, some people may have used library function, and I'm not sure whether that's allowed for leave code or not, but I just wrote my own function. So basically, uh, the function g means the number of days starting from the year 1971. So in order to get the difference, I just take g of day 2 minus g of day 1, and that will give me the difference, the number of days in between. So how I implement this function g is, first I find the year, the month, and uh, the number of the date using like substring. And then for each year starting from 1971, I add the number of days for each year. Then some years are leap years, and leap years have 366 days, and the other normal years have 365 days. So for leap years, uh, the condition for leap years is this. So a year is a leap year if it's div divisible by 400, or if it, it's divisible by 4, but not 100. So using this, I can count the number of days uh, from the years. Then I count the number of days for the month. Then using the rule for the days of the month, these are the months with 31 days. And otherwise, all other months which aren't two, which aren't February have 30 days. And otherwise, um, the only case left is if the month is February and the number of days in February dep depends on if it's a leap year or not. So if it's a leap year, then it's 29. Otherwise, it's 28. And then we add the number of days left from the, in the month. Okay, so for this problem, there are a few things you need to check. So the first thing I check is that the first thing I check is that each node has exactly one parent. Like uh, each node has at most one parent. So here I have a p array, which means that if I found a parent for node u or not. So at the start, I go through each node. I look at the left children and right children, and if they aren't negative one, I set <coughs> p of child to equal to one too. And that means that <coughs> the child has a parent. However, if the child already has a parent, then that means that this child has <coughs> at least two parents. So we can just return false. Then after that, in in the binary tree, there should be exactly one, exactly one root node, and that root node will have no parent. So go through all nodes and find the node without a parent, and that will be stored in MI. And if 
Wait. I think this is wrong here. I think this should probably be something like this. So if mi is not equal to negative one, that means that it has been set before and then we should return zero. And otherwise we just set mi equal to i. Anyways. And then and then if there does not exist a no, so if mi is still equal is still equal to negative one, that means there's no root there's no root node in the tree, so we should return false. And the uh, other thing we should check is that we don't have cycles like this. So that means if we just do a DFS starting from the root node, then we should visit each node exactly once. So that's what we'll do. We'll just DFS from the root node. We try to visit all nodes and if in the DFS we already visit some node before and we try to visit it again, then it will return false. And otherwise, we'll return true. Then the last thing you check is that mm, last thing to check is that there's only one component. So if there are two components that that means that some node will still be will still not be visited, so in that case we'll we'll return zero. In that case we'll return false. And otherwise after all these checks, if no if none of them fail, then we return one. So for closest to visitors, I actually think that the last two problems are easier. So anyways, what we do is we can factor num plus one and num plus two in square root of x time using this algorithm. So, so note that the number can be very large, so we have to do it in square root of num time. So what we do is, as long as i times i is smaller than or equal to x, then we'll just keep looping in. If i is not divisible by x, then we just skip i. Otherwise, I will be, i will be a divisor of x. And then we can set this to the new pair. As this one will be all this pair will always have a difference which is smaller than the previous pair pair. And when we do this check for num plus one and num plus two, and we check which one is better, which one has the smallest difference. And we return to one which has the smallest difference. That's basically it. So for largest multiple of three. So there are the, there are a few cases to notice here. So, alright, first of all, a number is a multiple of three if the sum of its digit is a multiple of three. So what we should do first is calculate the sum of its digits. So that's what I do here, and now we can split cases. So. Okay, so first, obviously, we need to sort the digits in descending order because we always want to put the largest digits at first in, in the front. And then if the sum is the already divisible by 3, then we don't need to remove anything. So here I have a function. Basically, means that return the string if we decide to remove, uh, if we decide to remove zero digits, which are which have a remainder of 1 and 0 digits would have which have a remainder of 2. And if s is the remainder of s is equal to 1, then that means we have two cases. We can either either remove a digit which has a remainder of 1 or we can remove two digits which have a remainder of 2. And for the last case when s has a remainder of 2, we can either remove a digit which has a remainder one digit which ha which has a remainder of 2 or two digits which have a remainder of one. Okay, so those are the cases we need to check. And the way I check these cases, first I create a check function. It basically checks which number is bigger. So first I compare the size. And if the size of one string is greater than the other, then I return the string with a greater size. And otherwise I compare the strings lexicographically. And then I return the one which is bigger. Okay, so for this function, which basically given the given the digits and the number of uh, digits of each remainder to remove, and it will return the greatest string. So what we do is, since D is sorted in descending order, we should try to remove the digits in the back first, with the digits who are smaller. So if we encounter a digit which, like, C means the number, since C means the number of, 
of each type we need to remove. If we still need to remove a, a number with this remainder, then we'll remove it and we'll just skip the of i. Otherwise, if we don't remove it, we'll push it. We'll put the digit into e, and then and then if we still have things to remove that we haven't removed yet, then we need then this case is impossible. So we just return the empty string. And then, okay, so since we added the digits to E in reverse order, that means the digits in E are actually sorted in increasing order now. So we reverse them first. And then after we reverse them, we basically just add the digits of E into our string. And then there's the case when the first digit of s is equal to zero. So as a case, if we have a lot of zeros, and in that case, we just return one single zero, and otherwise we just return s. So yeah, this basically finishes my solution. Yeah, the penalty was really bad. I think it has been 29 minutes, so I'm guaranteed a rank of, yeah, I'm guaranteed a rank of 23, at least. I don't know which one's accurate. I think this one's the accurate one, so it's either 12 or 23. Anyway, so I hope that my explanations were helpful to you, and if they were, then feel free to like or subscribe.